Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Paul. How are you? Very good. I'm happy to talk with you. Thank you so much for making time. So what are your questions? Yeah, uh, uh, let me start with asking you to explain what a balloon meister is. Um, a wizard, I guess. Uh, uh, I'm, if you will, the flight boss. Uh, we take weather, uh, analyze all the weather, try to mix up our targets with that so we can, because uh, uh, balloons can't steer, right? They go in different layers of the wind. And so we lay out the task. Uh, we manage the FAA. We manage all flight operations. Um, parties for the pilots and crews, uh, stuff like that. Okay. And how long have you been the balloon meister for the balloon classic for the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Triment Festival? Well, this is my first year as the official balloon meister. I've been the assistant balloon meister for several years. Uh, I was safety officer for a number of years. I've actually uh, been every position in the staff over the years with Hall of Fame. Uh, started off uh, pushing champagne around the very first year. I don't even think I could spell balloon at that point. We were still training and, and now I'm balloon meister. So. And because of your role as balloon meister or not because of your role, but you've got experience as well, actually flying hot air balloons from what I understand. I'm sure that's very helpful. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. I started, uh, I got my pilot certificate back in uh, 1990 and I've been flying ever since my wife, Penny, she got hers in, in 89 ladies first, you know how that goes. So uh, she got to go first. I went second. And here I am talking to you today. So it's been a great ride. Is hot air balloons something that you and Penny found together? Or is that something that brought you two together? No, we actually found it together. We showed up at uh, Coshocton. Uh, they have a rally early in June. We were living in Newcomerstown at the time. This is 1988. And uh, we went, you know, we, we saw it in the newspaper and said, hey, let's go do it. So we're sitting at the grandstands drinking some coffee and eating donuts at, at 530 in the morning. It's early. And some guy walks up to us and he says, hey, you like balloons? Uh, yeah. And, and so uh, we went and helped him that morning. And we helped him uh, take his balloon out and, and set it up, inflate it. He, he uh, added the heat, made it hot. And then right before he took off, he looked over at Penny and he says, uh, I need a wire watcher. Hop in. And she just jumped. Uh, and I swear uh, uh, her, her legs and, and every body went and jumped in immediately and her head caught up with her about two or three seconds later, you know, and uh, she had her fl first flight that day. I had my first flight the next day. And again, it just kind of lit a fire in both of us. And here we are today. That's incredible. So I think a lot of people probably don't realize that you actually do need a pilot's license to pilot a hot air balloon. Do you fly anything other than hot air balloons? Um, no, we do not. Uh, we are both our, our pilot certificate. You get a certificate, not a license. All right. You get a certificate from the FAA and ours is for lighter than air with an airborne heater. And if you become a gas balloonist, they remove that airborne heater restriction on you. And then you can float around with a, a bag of gas over your head. So. I can see why you might need a little extra credentialing for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and they fly. They'll, their missions are they could be three or four days. Uh, most of our flight missions are an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, uh, something like that. So a lot different type of flying. Okay. And you mentioned, you know, the way that you and Penny got into this was you went to a balloon rally. Someone invited you to, you know, help them with the setup process. I have to say one of my favorite memories from the balloon classic is I would go with my grandparents and then we would hop in the car when the balloons go up and we would try and follow them to their destination. And one time we did, we ended up where someone landed. We got to help pack up the balloon. It was a super cool experience for me as a child with my family and my two brothers. Have you ever had any experiences like that where someone has followed you to your destination or helped you get things set up or pack up? Almost every flight. I mean, you, you sometimes, you know, you take off because no one really knows where you're going to take off. You may knock on the landowner's door and say, hi, my name's Paul. Can I uh, set my balloon up? And, and they let you do it. But as you fly along, you attract people that, you know, they're driving by. They see you. You can hear them honking. They'll get out of their cars. They'll wave. And, and now with the advent of cell phones and stuff like that, everybody's out filming you. So it, it, it's kind of amazing. It, the people that you meet and that's the best part is the people that you meet along the way absolutely well that was a very special experience for me that's incredible that you get to help other people have that experience i think that's a really very cool treat what does your balloon look like it's a multicolored uh balloon uh ninety thousand cubic feet penny's running off to go get a picture i think right now uh she's sitting here with me my coach 
<laughs> and helping me out. But well, I could show you on my shirt. Oh, okay. Oh, oh that's cool. Is that Irish? Well, um, sort of. Uh, we had to, when we built that balloon, because we designed that, and, and that's one of the neat things you get to do. Uh, you can buy a stock balloon from a manufacturer if you want, or they'll give you color sheets, if you will, and you take your pencils, uh, your colored pencils and draw on it. So we actually designed that uh, color scheme ourselves, and no one else in America has that. that. That's unique to us. And I wanted a smiley face. If you're flying, you're smiling. Well, Penny's birthday is on St. Patrick's Day. So, and I mean, the whole planet celebrates her birthday. She's so lucky with that. But anyway, she wanted shamrocks on it. So our compromise is we made a shamrock smiley face and we put it on the very top of the balloon, which is called the parachute valve. So, and that's why we call it the hidden shamrock. You can see it while we're flating or you can see it while we're uh, flying if you happen to be in the basket with us. That's very cool. Well, I can tell you that uh, St. Patrick's Day is a big part of my life. My boyfriend treats it like a national holiday, the national yeah. holiday that it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Big, big Irish family. Yeah. That's very, very cool. Okay. So talk to me a little bit more about the balloon classic and your time with that. Uh, I want to talk to you actually a little bit first about steering. You know, you said you can't steer a hot air balloon. So what's it like when you're up in the air and kind of figuring out where you're going? Well, if you will, um, Imagine a, a pizza pie, if you will, or, or an apple pie, whichever one's your favorite, right? And you have those little slices of, of pie that you get, all right? That's kind of what the wind line does. Over an altitude thing, you, you're not going to get 360 degrees, but you're going to have some kind of an angle. And usually uh, the left will be down low and the right will be up high. So in that wedge, you try to find a wind that is blowing kind of in the direction towards a target or a landing site. Because really targets are just like landing sites. You try to fly over them, get down low, drop your marker on it, and, and closest person to the center wins. So using those things, and the funny thing is you never, you never find a wind blowing you exactly at the target, right? That would be great. And usually what you have to do is what we kind of call corkscrewing. You may climb up high, go to the right a little bit, and then you get right to the right of the target. So you'll descend down low, you'll come left. Uh, and then come back up and you basically kind of spiral your way into the target. And if you time that just perfect, you literally can come down out of the sky, come right across the X and the really, really good pilots, which you'll see at, at the uh, KSU Stark Center uh, this weekend. They literally, they don't throw their marker. They place it in the center of the X. They're six inches off the ground. They lean out of the basket. They just hold their marker over and just drop, just gently drop it right in the center. That is really good piloting. Me, when I was doing that, I was kind of more like the World War II bomber pilot. Pilot to bombardier, we're over the target. And uh, I would usually fly from high. I never was that good enough to be able to just come right down on the deck, six inches off, and just place it. But when you do that, uh, Bill Smith, our announcer, he'll announce your name. The crowd goes crazy. It's kind of like kicking the uh, winning field goal at the Super Bowl or something. It, it's a nice feeling. That's incredible. And... Uh... Quite a few dozens of people taking off this year from the Kent State Stark Center. Yep, we have 48 pilots this year joining us. Uh, 24 Fiesta pilots and 24 competitive pilots. And the competitive pilots work in teams of three. So I, I kind of create the game for them. And then they have about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to solve the puzzle that I've laid in front of them to try to get the best scores. And, and they're allowed three of them to work together to try to, to figure that out. This is something I'm uh, just hearing about for the first time, this competition element. So what happens at the end of that competition? Does it determine the order you take off or anything like that? No, um, the uh, competitive pilots, they will have an individual launch point. So we'll give them a string of targets. And for example, KSU is, is always in our string of targets, all right? Because that's where everybody's at. So they'll go, they'll, they'll look at the winds just like we looked at the winds. And they will find a place, knock on somebody's door. Granted, it's going to be early on Friday or Saturday and Sunday mornings, but they might knock on your door and say, hey, can we launch from here? And that's because that property is right on the wind line to take them into KSU. And then they'll fly into there. And then we may have what we call downstream targets, uh, other targets for them to uh, fly to and then drop their markers. We have measuring teams that will go out and set the targets up and then measure the pilots uh how far away from the center they are to come up with the scores. And then 
all of those measuring sheets come back and those are just raw results. Uh, two centimeters, 20 cent or 20 meters, something like that. We put those into a scoring program that the Balloon Federation of America has written, and it will calculate your scores. And if you win a task, you get a thousand points. And then it kind of goes down to the last person who, who had the furthest distance away, if you will. And then we total over the course of the time, we may have 12, 15 tasks over the course of the weekend. We total up all those scores. And out of that, again, somebody's going to be in first place, second place, third place, uh, like that. So that's kind of how we get our points. Well, I'll tell you what, I am from Canton, Ohio. I was born and raised there and have long been coming back, even when I lived other places, recently moved back to Ohio three years ago. But I have been enjoying the Balloon Classic for a very long time, and I am learning something new about it. I had no idea Excellent. Excellent. about this competitive aspect to it. So I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Yeah, we're one of the only um, weekend rallies that do it. We also have a U.S. team nationals that Penny and I got to participate in. That was a little earlier in the summer. That was down in Shreveport, Louisiana. The, the whole team concept, most of the time you compete by yourself. All right. You know, it's just you, your your balloon team and, and off you go here. We put three pilots together and they have to use their radios to talk in flight. They have to plan in flight They have to plan on the ground. So there's a lot of communication and it kind of builds camaraderie amongst the pilots. They become fast friends after competing together. And and you learn a lot because everybody brings something unique to the table. They all have different experiences. And every time I've ever gone flying with anybody, I always learn something. That's what I like about it. It's not something that, well, once I got my skill set, I'm done. No, I've been learning for 32 years and I'm going to learn something this weekend as well. So that's incredible. Before I let you go here, thank you so much for sharing all of this incredible insight into what it's like piloting a hot air balloon and some of the extra aspects of the balloon classic. Is there anything that you would like people to know about hot air balloons that you think maybe they don't know? Um, it's a very safe sport. It, and it's the one thing in my entire life. I have never experienced anything quite like this in how many smiles it brings, both to, to us as pilots, but to people around. And every time you look up into the sky, and, and I think you'll agree with this, it, it's, it just brings a sense of wonderment to you. How something seven stories tall, several tons in weight, can just literally float away from the earth effortlessly. Uh, gentle giants is what they're called, and, and, and that's why we like flying them is making smiles on everybody's face. That's incredible. Well, very much looking forward to uh, our own flight tomorrow morning. Excellent. Very excited. Excellent. We'll see you there bright and early on Friday. And I hope everybody gets to enjoy the Balloon Classic this weekend in Canton. It truly is one of my favorite Pro Football Hall of Fame and Triumph Festival events. Thank you so much for your time, Paul. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.